Just a lad of eighteen summers, yet no one can deny. As he walked to death that morning, proud he held his head on high. Can be standing to attention while he bowed his last farewell. Hi everybody and welcome to Mike's Hidden History. I'm here in the village of Ratfilly in County Carlow in the southeast of Ireland to tell you the story of Kevin Barry. And this is a statue of Kevin Barry who was an 18 year old medical student hanged during the War of Independence on the 1st of November 1920. Now, I am a relation of Kevin. His mother was my grand aunt. His mother Mary was my grand aunt. And my own mother um, died two years ago, um, uh, and in the attic I found some 100-year-old newspapers, which were obviously in the family and described the death uh, and um, the execution and the court-martial of Kevin. And I wrote a small book uh, on that, uh, recording what it said in the papers, the execution of Kevin Barry. Now, Kevin was born in Fleet Street in Dublin, uh, where the family had a dairy. But he has an association with Radfilly because they also had a farm here in nearby Tom Bay. Uh, and Kevin spent four years here attending school, living on the farm, and attending the school here in Radfilly uh, between 1911 and 1914. In that year, 1914, he returned to Dublin to attend secondary school. And this was also the year of the outbreak of World War I. In 1916, two years later, um, we had here in Ireland the uh, uprising or the 1916 rising, where a group of nationalists um, uh, took over the centre of Dublin um, um, and because they saw England's difficulty during the war as Ireland's opportunity and it was a time to uh, um, uh, try to start a rebellion against English rule. Now, that wasn't a very popular rebellion at the start. Uh, in fact, uh, um, 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 when they were captured and the city of uh, the center of the city was destroyed, um, uh, people uh, were, 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 were aghast with the destruction. However, the um, the, the execution uh, and summary execution, in fact, over the following days of the main leaders of the rebellion turned the people against uh, uh, rule from London and uh, consolidated support for the nationalist movement, movement for uh, seeking independence uh, and an Irish Republic. Now, Kevin uh, lived near that area in Fleet Street, near the centre of Dublin, and witnessed that destruction. And in a way, this uh, kind of um, radicalised him and others, uh, turned them uh, uh, very uh, into a, a much more nationalistic stance. He had joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the IRB, which became the Irish Republican Army subsequently. And he was active in that while he was at school and also when he went to uh, University of Dublin and now you see the where he started his uh, the, uh, to study medicine now um, he was captured in fact on an incident that happened in monks near monks bakery in North King Street in Dublin and to explain very briefly the um, uh, our Irish Republican Army were short of arms and they used to identify what they considered soft targets uh, where there might be um, British soldiers uh, not um, as alert as they should be. And on one such occasion, we had um, a lorry arriving um, two or three times a week at Monk's Bakery to collect um, uh, bread. And on, on um, the 20th of September, 1920, um, Kevin and colleagues um, surrounded this um, lorry. They had done something like this before, but unfortunately, on this occasion, shooting broke out. One soldier died there, and two other soldiers died subsequently. Kevin's gun jammed. Uh, when his colleagues retreated, he hid under the lorry, but he was captured. He was brought to the North Dublin Union for questioning, and he was sent then for court martial in Marlborough Barracks. 
uh, on the 20th of October. Um, during his court martial of one day, um, it lasted one day, he read the newspaper, he wasn't interested. And he was found uh, guilty and uh, sentenced to uh, to be uh, hanged in uh, Mountjoy prison on the 1st of November 1920. Now, there were lots of uh, the Lord Mayor of Dublin and uh, the Archbishop of Dublin uh, appealed for clemency, but he did not want clemency. He wanted to die for, uh, as he saw, die for the Republic. Now, there had been uh, a history of martyrdom uh, before this. Thomas Ashe um, had died um, uh, in 1917, and the Lord Mayor of Cork, Terence McSweeney, had also died after a hunger strike, both, both at hunger strike. And his funeral, in fact, was on the day, the very day before Kevin's execution on the 1st of November. Now, his mother said he was proud to die for, um, that she, her son was d dying for Ireland. Um, she, uh, uh, most, was broken hearted and the whole family were broken hearted. But, um, uh, at, at the same time, uh, she, she was happy that he was, uh, th that her son was um, uh, was in turn happy to die for the Republic as the SARS. Now on the morning or the night before his execution and on the morning of his execution people were outside Mount Joy prison, they were praying and that piety and that uh, religious fervour is, is something that's identified with, with this period and, and, and especially I think around Kevin because of his age as well. Um, uh, on at eight o'clock in the next morning, after he uh, had mass, um, attended mass, um, he walked um, according to Father Albert, Albert the Capuchin uh, priest who attended the execution, that he was steadfast and unflinching to the end. Um, newspapers the following day use these religious terms, uh, headlines such as Kevin Barry's holy death. On another newspaper mentioned holy as a saint, brave as a, a lion. Um, Kevin w was um, um, certainly brave and he, he, he showed that he had uh, uh, piety as well uh, at, uh, towards the end. Um, in <clears throat> the, um, his body was buried on the grounds of the prison and subsequently uh, in 2001 himself, Kevin, and uh, some of other uh, young people uh, were given a state funeral in Dublin in October 2001. And his body now rests in Glasnevin Cemetery, the Republican plot in Glasnevin Cemetery. Kevin's, um, the impact of his execution, it horrified people here, it horrified people around the world. And uh, as you can see from the introduction to this uh, TikTok video, there were uh, 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 the song Kevin Barry was sung, uh, was recorded by many, many um, uh, artists, including Leonard Cohen. Uh, <clears throat> his death and the death of others at that time hastened the, uh, 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 the end of the War of Independence and a uh, truce in 1920. And subsequently, the Irish Free State was established in 1922. Perhaps not the republic that Kevin would have wished for, but it was um, a, an advance and it was a freedom of sorts uh, until 1948, when a republic was declared. So that's the story of Kevin Barry, his impact and his influence on, um, on our uh, history, the history of Ireland. Uh, he's well remembered here and well loved here and his family, the Barry family, still live here. That's all from Mike's Hidden Histories. More next time.